In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I'm playing the Tesla Meltdown, which is the yield max covered call fund on Tesla or synthetic calls, whichever you want to call it. It has a huge dividend and it begs the question, should we be adding to shares here on the weakness because we're trying to get our income up to over 200,000 period dividends, as you know, at this channel. So yes, we're living the fire lifestyle, which means financially independent, retire early, and so can you. Email me for my e-guides at akintod48 at gmail.com if you need help doing the same. When you buy my e-guides, you get free access to the Discord chat room for life and my phone number for life, but only up until a thousand members is reached in Discord, which is approaching fast. So please keep this in mind. Our performance of value shows that we're up 1.4% for the year. Even after our spill from Tesla yesterday, we're still in line with the indexes. We're still beating the Russell and the Dow Jones. And after we get our dividends from Cornerstone this month, our performance will increase significantly. Also today, we're up about $2,000. So that should help our performance tomorrow, but not in a great way. Every $4,000 for me is about 1%. So this will help our performance some tomorrow, but our dividends is where we really get our performance from in Cornerstone, Defiance, and even Tesla. So if you go to our share price of Tesla, you'll see that I'm down about $2,500, okay? So Tesla, where is it at right here? $2,500, $2,200 we're down. But we've been collecting a lot of dividends with Tesla over the past year, okay? So we're up in the position overall. And should I be adding to this position now after the weakness in the stock price yesterday? Well, people are asking, what's going on with Tesla? Should we be adding to this? Should I dump this stock? Well, I don't look at anything like that, okay? All I do is look at the indexes. Tesla, as you know, is 1.75% of the S&P. It's a top 10 holding. So I don't mind what Tesla is doing because as the indexes go, so do I. As long as my position in Tesla is represented to be about what it is in the indexes, I don't mind holding Tesla. And even if it's down, I'm going down with the indexes. But Tesla pays a 60% dividend or so. So for me, I'm just waiting until the dividend cash flows my position or doubles it in less than two years. We have about 130,000 of margin debt here, which at this channel, if you don't know already, for every $1 here, you get $4 of purchasing power that you can hold overnight. Even though it says it's intraday, I hold this debt overnight. I never sell this debt. My dividends just pay this debt off over time. So my 150,000 in dividends, or as you see right now, 180,000 in dividends, those dividends will pay this debt back in less than a year and I'll be at plus 50,000 cash by the end of the year. But I have about 50,000 in bills, so I should be at about a zero debt level at the end of the year and my account should grow by the equivalent amount. Assuming a flat market, my account should grow by about 150,000 by 2025. So. After my debt's paid, I'll be left with all these dividend paying assets to myself, paying monthly cash flow for life. These dividends qualify to banks for loans, and that's how I live the FIRE lifestyle, okay? That's the secret to FIRE is having dividends, not trading gains, act as a pay stub to qualify to banks for loans. The other secret I use at this channel to live the FIRE lifestyle is maintenance. If you go to Tesla, you'll see that the maintenance here is 50%, okay? 50% is a problem, and this is what gets in the way of me adding more to Tesla. Now, I'll break this down for you in one second, whether I'm adding to Tesla or not, but first, let me explain to you that when you have 50% maintenance, that means it sucks up 50% of your equity. If you need help understanding maintenance, that's in my volume three margin e-guide. So I wanna add to Tesla, but I have to keep it at what it is in the indexes, okay? I can't get too aggressive in Tesla because it's a stock. Stocks can do anything. They can fall by the amount of a stock. Theoretically, stocks can go to zero, but the indexes don't fall by that amount. They usually fall by about 20 to 30 percent in a year in a terrible year in 2022 we fell about 30 percent but individual stocks fell way more than that so i can't just add too much to stocks in general okay i keep all of my stock positions small here 1000 1000 2000 if they're a higher quality and if they're really high quality and a large part of the index is like microsoft and apple i'll have about ten thousand in those because apple as you know is about 10 percent of the nasdaq so I keep my position sizes matched to the indexes and Kony is the only outlier there. I have a lot more in Kony because it has a really large dividend, around 100% dividend to, to compensate me for my risk, but also it's a different asset class. That's Bitcoin. So I keep a little bit more in Kony for exposure to Bitcoin because I don't really want to own Litecoins and all those other things because they don't pay a dividend. I have some altcoins and some Bitcoin miners that you can see here like uh, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. 
but I keep a small amount in those to where they can't hurt me if we go down. But if they really take off like they're supposed to, it will benefit my account and increase my performance further. I also had a TSLS short, as you guys know, and I closed that for a gain yesterday. And I was going to redeploy that Tesla short into Tesla at the lows. I just wanted to make sure that the dust settled before I did that. And today we're up about a percent or two in Tesla. So that means to me it's not a big enough bounce to call this a bottom. I mean, after all, when you have a 10% down day and the next day you're bouncing by one or 2%, that's not exactly conviction, okay? If we go to a chart of Tesla, you'll see that it's barely bouncing after a weak day yesterday. And again, that's a sign of weakness. But I'm not looking to see if Tesla is a good buy here at these levels or if the story is still intact. I'm only treating Tesla as a dividend vehicle to have the ends justify the means okay all i want are dividends so if i have a 20 percent dividend i'm going to cash flow in five years if i have a 50 percent dividend i'm going to cash flow in two years and all i care about is buying as many names as i can and I don't even really care what the ticker symbol is. I just want them to cash flow me because if I'm getting dividends from these assets, they're paying my bills, they're providing qualifying income to banks, and I'm paying down my margin. So I don't really care what these ticker symbols are. Now for Tesla, do I believe in the story? Yes, of course. I think that's why it's a top 10 holding in the S&P. And when I was traveling abroad this fall in Europe, I saw Teslas everywhere. And it was the number one selling car in the world, I think, this year. So of course, Tesla has some compelling fundamentals to its store. But I try not to make any predictions of where stocks are going to go. I only look at the dividends and how much they cash flow me. And I look at the maintenance, which I already explained to you is a big deal with Tesla. And then if I want to get that income or growth, I'm not going to just keep buying more Tesla for growth. Okay. If I want growth, uh, I'm going to buy some Cornerstone because that's where I get most of my growth from. It's a four-star fund, as you know here. Okay, Cornerstone, four-star fund, beats the S&P over the last 10 years. If you see my past videos, this is where I get my growth from. And it has low maintenance. Cornerstone has low maintenance, 30% maintenance. And it has a 21% dividend that you drip down at the NAV every month for free money. That's why it's such high quality. And it's tied to the indexes. So I get my growth from Cornerstone because it gives you 20 to 30% premiums per year on top of the 21% dividend. And if you play the rights offering correctly, you can really level up your account and close end funds. And that's what my volume four e guide instructs you on how to do with Cornerstone. You have to time this fund around its rights offering. Beware. When you buy my e guide, you get free access to the Discord chat room for life, and we alert you of the Cornerstone rights offering announcement in Discord. We have an RSS feed hooked up in the Discord chat room so we can get the news as it happens. Plus, I'm always checking the Cornerstone website to see when the rights offering will occur. And then we're getting most of our dividends from Defiance. Look at how well Defiance has been doing for us okay we're, we're actually up in qqqy we're flat almost in jepy and we're up in iwmy okay so these have been paying me thousands of dollars every month defiance and they have a, about the same yield as tesla so why would i go in and buy more tesla when i could just buy more defiance when they're indexed they're eat their etf so i have a lot more safety when i buy defiance they have the same maintenance okay if you go to a maintenance tab of defiance you'll see it has a similar yield as tesla Okay, 60% and it has the same maintenance. So why not just buy more Defiance? I mean, yes, you could say I'm trying to capitalize on Tesla growth. Okay, that's why I want to buy Tesla on the dip. It's going to move more than Defiance. Yeah, but with yield max funds, I really don't consider growth in them to be my main target. Okay, my main target for yield max is dividends. Okay, and if we get some growth, that's icing on the cake, but I would just simply trim out those gains like I did with Tesla before. When we had about 13 grand in Tesla, I trimmed that out. Same for Coney. I took about 3,000 in gains from each Tesla and Coney, and then I waited for the dip in those names to rebalance. So Coney, I've been nibbling on, and Tesla, I bought 500 this morning. Okay, so was, I'm just nibbling on Tesla just to get that incremental income of 60%. And you know, there might be an oversold bounce coming in Tesla, so I'll get a little extra performance in the meantime. But come on, I mean, let's look at a position of Tesla. Seven thousand dollars I have in it. If it moves up 10%, that's $700. $700 barely even moves my account, okay? $700, you need about $5,000 to move my account by one basis point. So the way I get my performance is through Cornerstone because if you have 400 grand in Cornerstone, let's say you get a 10% gain in Cornerstone, that's $40,000 roughly. Whereas if I get a 10% gain in Tesla, that's $700. Or let's say if I wanted a double in Tesla, okay, a double, 100% gain, I would only make $7,000. But for Cornerstone, all I have to do is get a 10% move and I make $40,000. So I'm indexed in Cornerstone. I feel safer being in the indexes and it's lower maintenance than Defiance or Tesla. And that's how I'm getting back my performance.
performance. I'm getting my growth from Cornerstone and some dividends. Yield Max funds, I'm just using as a trading vehicle to get some growth, but mainly the focus are dividends, okay? And when I do get some growth in these yield max funds, like I said, I trim out at the highs and I rebalance at the lows. I sold the short in Tesla today in TSLS and I rebalanced at the lows for Tesla. I bought about $500 worth. That took my margin debt to about 130,000, which again, I'm not worried about. My income of over 180,000 per year will pay this back in less than a year. And now I just continue to live the fire lifestyle, okay? No matter what these stocks do with yield max, I don't put too much money in them to where they can affect me. I put all my money in the indexes and that's how you stay safe. That's how you compound your earnings. It's easier to earn 40 grand on 400,000 than it is to earn 10 grand on 10,000. So I'm getting much better compounding ability with cornerstone and I'm getting much better income with Defiant. So why add to yield max unless you just want another dividend vehicle to give you more cash flow ability like I'm using with Tesla. Okay. I just keep these small, like a square, $3,000. It's a dividend vehicle. I don't care what the ticker symbol is. It could be ticker symbol X, Y, Z. These dividend vehicles are just means to an end. Okay. I don't care again, what they do. Just give me the dividend. And in a certain amount of time that should cash flow. And that's going to pay down my margin without me doing anything. Okay. My margin will be paid off automatically. All right, and then I'll keep reinvesting my dividends back into Cornerstone because that has a special drip. And also beware, if you're trying to switch brokers to go with lower maintenance in Defiance or Yieldmax, some brokers don't have the special drip for Cornerstone. So that's why you need either a Fidelity or an E-Trade because that's what the Discord members have basically narrowed down their searches to, okay? It turns out Fidelity or E-Trade has everything that you need, but you sometimes wanna have some interactive brokers or Robinhood because they have really low maintenance. So you can trade in one place, like you can trade your, your risk on names in interactive brokers or Robinhood, but then you can use your cornerstone and defiance in fidelity for the special drip and the lower maintenance. So if you have any questions of what I'm doing, guys, please leave them in the comment section below. If you need help living the fire lifestyle, email me for my e-guides at akintod48 at gmail.com. When you buy my e-guides, you get free access to the Discord chat room for life and my phone number, so keep that in mind. But when we reach 1,000 members on Discord, my phone number will not be free anymore. I will charge for that separately. Beware of spam, okay? I'm not selling anything but my e-guides. If you get any messages from me saying that I'm offering a course or something, that is spam, okay? Beware of spam on YouTube and Discord. And if I do start another service, I will announce it here on YouTube or in the Discord announcement board. Okay, so if you like the video, click like or subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.